So let's bring in Donovan Bennett now, writer and host with Sportsnet, to talk about the, the, the role that pro athletes can play in speaking out against racial injustice. And, and Donovan, we heard from Blake Wheeler there, and, and there have been others, but, but when you talk to white athletes and you ask them the question, why aren't more of you speaking out? I mean, what do you hear from them? Yeah, I hear a lot of, uh, you know, I'm uncomfortable. I'm not versed in the information. And I hear a lot of, it's not my place to speak, that I want to actually stand at the back and allow uh, the black athletes who have been impacted by this pain to speak. And, and I understand that sentiment, but in a way, that's the problem. The fact that you don't feel the same pain, you don't feel as convicted. And I totally get being uncomfortable and it is tough in a tweet or in a statement to really you know, get across what you want to say. But I've been uncomfortable for a while. Black athletes have been uncomfortable putting their necks on the line for a while. George Floyd was very uncomfortable with a knee in his neck. So the, the point of being comfortable, we are past that. These are issues that we've been talking about for 400 years. That's not a small data pool. That is a big sample. And yet still we're having the same conversations. So we need people with power and privilege and people who aren't impacted by it every day to help in the conversation. But you, you think about... So Colin Kaepernick, I mean, it's hard to imagine that that was four years ago that, that he took a knee, but he paid a price for that. I mean, he took a knee and he got chopped out at the knees. The, the fear of, of retribution uh, fr from those in power, from fans, that, that must factor into the equation here. Uh, I mean, I, uh, Colin Kaepernick paid that price, but you can't tell me that Peyton Manning or Tom Brady or Drew Brees or Aaron Rodgers said similar things or even just stood alongside with Colin Kaepernick, gave him a little bit of comfort that their careers would be threatened. I, I, I think especially in this moment, if big athletes spoke out, not only would people applaud them, but I think some of their corporate sponsors, which they are afraid of jeopardizing, would actually back them. And wouldn't that be a great way for them to use their power and influence to tangibly work with some of their benefactors to help in a way that's even greater than their own power? So athletes do have a lot of power. They have a way to vote with their voice, but they also have a way to vote with the rooms that they're allowed to walk in that people like, frankly, myself or George Floyd or the people protesting on the streets every day don't. Donovan, on a, on a personal note, uh, you have a little one, right? I do, yeah. How, yeah. how old is he? Uh, he's just turned one, 13 months. 13 months. He must figure prominently in, in the way that you see all of this. He does. And I can't say why for a lot of people this specific incident is different. But I can't say why it's different for me. And it's not because I'm at home quarantined with this quarantine beard. It's because when I see the scenes of George Floyd, when I see him prone on the pavement with a knee in his neck for eight plus minutes, screaming that he can't breathe, screaming for his mother, I, I don't see myself in those scenes anymore. I see my young son. And it breaks me to think that one day, Martin Luther King's dream may not be realized in concert with my son that he won't be judged by the content of his character and the values I'm trying to raise him with. He's going to be judged by the color of his skin. So me as a father trying to protect him, at what point do I rob him of his innocence, rob him of the fact that he loves to come up and give me big wet kisses and he loves to laugh when we're on walks and look at leaves? When do I rob him of his of his innocence and let him know that this world that he's in is not fair, that he's going to have to work twice as hard to get half. And even when he does that, sometimes, sometimes it's going to have terrible consequences. And when I look at George Floyd, every single time I think of my son. Donovan, I truly appreciate every opportunity I get to listen to you. Thank you so much for your time. Likewise. Thank you for having this conversation.